Jack, Coach, you got a couple of big, big games coming up this weekend. I'm curious what you feel your team team's preparedness level is at right now. Are you guys ready to face LSU in Washington this weekend? Well, we've we've been real fortunate that we've had opportunities to practice probably as as long as anybody else in the country, and I have a lot of returning players, and so it's been a it's been a challenge to try to keep them going going against each other. But I think we're we feel like we're ready. Uh, LSU is a very very good team, very athletic and physical, and um, the only way you learn from that, I think, is playing against it. Now we've. We try to go against the boys and try to try to emulate that a little bit, but it's it's been tough that way. But I know my team's ready to play. They're ready to start playing games. It's it's been a kind of a long summer and a long, I think, preseason a little bit with the practice. So we're excited about it. It's it's hard to play two tough games in a row, but you know, that's the way you get better. That's how you get better as a team. And so we're we're looking forward to the challenge. Jonathan, you mentioned it that you have, you know, you have a lot of returning players coming back. Do you have a pretty good gauge on what you think the identity of the team is, or even with so many players coming back, does it still take a little while? Well, when you get the best player in the league back, um, things change. The ball's in her hand a lot. She makes a lot of great decisions. But I think what's happened, Jason, is uh, with her being gone, a lot of kids had to do some things last year that weren't comfortable. And it's made them a better player. It's made Paisley a better player. It's made Maria a better player. They they were used to doing a lot of things. Now it's just coming easy to them. Um, you know, Tegan is a really – the kid from Colgate is a really good player. And she comes in with a great passer. I don't know how those all those New Zealand people, they must do something with a young age, teach them how to pass. But a great passer and a good feel. And so – this year we can kind of mix up the lineup, which I'm kind of excited about. Is I can go big, I can go average, I can go small, I can do a lot of things a little bit different than what I've had. Um, we have a lot of depth. This is probably as good as team as I've had in the past with depth. Hopefully, coach will be smart and use it and and and, and be willing to really really do that. So um, they're playing well right now. This is the best team that I've had this early in, in the motion, and they're the best team I've had running their zone offense because they're so good at passers. You kind of already touched on this a little bit, but uh, what have you noticed from the newcomers uh, to this team? What do you think they'll bring to you this season? Well, first of all, Lauren, Lauren, I didn't mention her. Lauren Gustin is the best defender on our team in the post. She, she is – I haven't seen a kid rebound – like this kid, and she runs the floor as hard as anybody. And she's now getting really comfortable with the motion. She she struggled a little bit early with it, but now she's feeling comfortable. Um, she's going to be a – if she's not the newcomer of the year, I'd, I'd be really surprised in our league. Um, I mentioned Tegan. Tegan is a very versatile player, can pass, shoot, can post up, very good defender, can guard the post, the wing. Um, Kayla hasn't been able to play as much. She hurt her knee at Michigan State, and so she's been fighting that. But she's going to come in and give us some really good depth. The person that's been the biggest surprise are two kids. One is um, Kaylee Smiler at the guard line. She played really well last year in some games, and she's playing with a lot of confidence right now and, and, and comes in and does some good things for us. And Mally Perry, you know, uh, She's like a different kid right now. I mean, she's more aggressive. She's hitting her shot. She defensively, she's on top of it. And, you know, it's it's weird how it works. You you work all year, years and years with these kids, and some eventually that light switches on. And I think it really has with with uh, Mally right now. So I'm expecting big things from her and let her come in and and really show what she's done so well uh, during the summer. Darnell and Sean Walker. And then let's do Norma Gonzalez after that. Hey, Jeff, uh, it kind of was up and down depending on what you were looking at on who you were going to play this weekend in that second game. Can you speak a little bit to kind of what happened? Uh, I know you weren't scheduled. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, we were, we were. We were supposed to play UT Martin, which 
you know, that name sounds like, oh, they're not that good, but UT Martin is one of the better mid-major teams in the country. You know, I get a vote on that every every week, and they, they're they a very, very good team. And so we were counting on them. Um, they decided they could not travel, and so they, they switched it, and they gave us a choice. They kind of said, Coach, you can play nobody and just play one game, or you can play Lamar, or you can play – we think we can get Washington to come in. And Mexico was in the mix too. And I said, you know, we want to play the best team. We can play. And um, so Washington is a is a Pac-12 school, and they beat us last time we played them. So that's going to be a good matchup for us. The negative part of it is we really don't have a lot of film on them, and we we kind of prepared for, 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 for UT Martin. But, you know, I've got great assistant coaches that will adjust and we'll be able to do it. So it'll be, a, it'll be a tough tournament. And who knows? We might go down there and one of the, one, some team could, could, could be, have COVID-19 and not be able to, to, to perform or do it. Maybe it'll be a different game. They, they might come to us and say, hey, so-and-so can't play, now you got to play this team. And that's fine. That's, that's what preseason is all about is to get your team ready for it. Yes. Yeah. The only one we don't have is is Signe. Signe had knee surgery because of COVID nineteen. She couldn't get surgery in May in Sweden, so she had to get it here. She will be out till probably uh, the first of January, middle of January. Um, Kayla's not going to go on the trip. We're going to get her treatment here, um, so she can be ready to go. Kyra is is the one that got hurt last year. Our freshman. She's she's coming back. She's had some. She had her knee redone. I think we've got it finally fixed, and she's just trying to get in shape. And I'm hoping to use her some some time in this tournament. Sarah, everybody knows she had her meniscus. She had to get trimmed up. And tell you the truth, I didn't think she'd be ready to play this week, but she's she's doing it. So it's amazing what what Jeff, our trainer, can do, and and, and the hard work of these young ladies, and and really what what they can go through. Uh, and so we should have everybody. I, I which. Like I said, that's one of the strengths of this team is our depth, I think. Kayla is eligible to play this year? She did. She got her waiver. So she, she's going to be able to, to play this year. And we all know this is a free one this year. It's a bonus year. Um, the girls can come back next year if they want our seniors. And so it's, I think it's a win-win situation for us. No, no, no question. It's like yesterday, I'm sitting there watching TV and my phone's going off and they're saying, hey, did you hear Utah women aren't going to play and they're going to miss their these two games this weekend and heard about UConn and then I hear about another men's team and, and you know, you kind of hear about football, but it's, it's now it's your sport and it's kind of reality and, you know, um, it's tough. It's just, I don't. It's so tough mentally. I, Tom Tom Golightly is 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 working his tail off here. Uh, our sports psychiatrist and, and he, I mean, it's just so mental. And it's not just mental with the players. It's it's mental with the coaches. I mean, it's like how do you prepare and what do you do and how do you not overwork them? But how do you not under? I mean, it's it's a tough tough thing. But you know, it's going to make us better. And that's that's the key. It's for us to get better. And hopefully, we can. Get through this and have it have a conference and have an in state tournament. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's the biggest thing for us. Jenny, with it being kind of a free year for athletes, and then because so much can change at any given moment because of COVID, what's the one thing that you're hoping to um, that your team can accomplish, and what's the one thing that you really want to <clears throat> be able to say like this is the one thing we wanted to do? I would say be able to. Have have diversity and be able to get through it. I think in life, you're going to have ups and downs, and how you learn how to deal with that is really important. I think sports is one of the greatest things to do that because you win or you lose. 
And I think as a team, as a, each player, they, they're going to have to learn how to bounce with things and look at the good and the bad and be able to handle themselves. For me as a coach, this is going to be one of the hardest coaching years of my life, not because I don't have a good team, I don't have good players. It's because how, how do I motivate them? How do I get them to be sharp at their game without over, overworking their minds? How am I going to do that? And it's going to be a fill. It's going to be talking to my assistant coaches and talking to people that can help me make the best decisions. Um, I'll tell you one thing about this team is, and I think the word I could use, use is that they are they're just ruthless. They're tough. And they've been already through some tough things already this year, and they've, they've, they've handled it so well as a team. I've got good leadership. You're going to have to have that. If you don't have players that can lead their team in this tough time, it's, it's going to be hard. And, you know, it's going to be hard on you guys. It's, you know, the Zoom stuff's great, but it's not the same as talking to you guys in person and, and getting the personalities and all that. But we're all going to get through this, and we're all going to be better for it. Darnell or Sean or Norma, do you have like a follow-up question you wanted to ask? Okay. Any other questions for Coach then? All right. I think hey, that's it. Thanks. Hey, for hey, hey, today. hey, before I get it, hey, first of all, we appreciate you guys. The media reading stuff and doing things is one of the biggest lifts of me and my and my team. So thank you so much for doing that and hope that hope you can get to the games. I hope we can have that so you can see this this team's gonna be a fun team to watch this year. They really they play they play so well together, so it'll be fun. Thank you. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Why I'm working, you guys will be working too, but you'll be working at home. I'll be in a hotel locked up. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>